I had somebody um, asking questions about how to make a filter for biogas. And so I thought I'd make a quick video just talking about filters. Um, the most, in my opinion, the most important filter is a water bubbler of some kind. Um, I have a video talking about how it cleaned 60 parts per million at, uh, H2S out of my biogas. I know it's also somewhat effective with CO2. Um, but if you're going to put biogas into uh, near anything that's made of metal, I think it's pretty critical that it at least gets bubbled first. So we're going to talk about how to make a simple bubbler. I'm going to actually make one right now real fast, um, the simplest way I know how. And it's going to be completely unedited because that's the only way I do anything. So I got a mason jar. Regular lid. I'm going to drill two holes, two holes in it. Then tubing. My holes are too little. So one tube goes to the bottom, the second tube doesn't. Second tube stays up high. Alright, now we seal it. Little bit of silicone on each one. Boom, set it aside, let it dry. Now, that's your water bubbler. So the inlet is going to be this side that goes down to the bottom and the gas outlet is this side. So when you start to get uh, flow, Gas is going to have to bubble through the water. So you hook that up to the outlet from your uh, from your biodigester. So I would route this directly to the inlet to my filter, and uh, and then this would go off to my inner tube to store the filtered gas. I would recommend more than just a water bubbler. The next one would be a desiccant filter, which we can talk about later. Um, I had a couple other things to go through for, uh, for that. If you wanted to do something fancy like what I'm, I'm using these, and that just, uh, this is made for water. I think it's made for well water. It was a desiccant filter before but I would run it backwards. So this would be the inlet and this would be the outlet. That way the biogas has to come through this tube and bubble out to get out. And then you just fill this with water. Okay, oh, to make this, I'll put a link for these guys. To make this, you just, uh, Take a one inch PVC and seal it up around the top. Easy peasy. Uh, the thing about this is water, okay, I got two things about this. Um, the water does go bad. Um, I don't know how long it's good for. It's impossible for me to say. That would depend on how, how much H2S is in your uh, biogas and how much biogas you're producing and how much water is in your bubbler, um, things like that. I can tell you that I have these inner tubes here and uh, every time those get full, I change the water. So some of you guys are making a lot more biogas than I am. Um, so that might not be practical or you might need a much bigger bubbler. Uh, 
Now, I you could test it for H2S and then just change the, the water in the bubbler every time um, you detect H2S downstream of your bubbler. That would be one way to do it if you want to get the most out of each bubbler. Um, the water, when you dispose of it, uh, I dump it, I have a gravel driveway. I dump it on my driveway to uh, kill weeds. Um, so that's a, yeah, we're making fertilizer and we're making weed killer. Uh, uh, another consideration is if, let's talk about this, if, uh, if the temperature in here drops, I have this submersion heater in here right now, keeping it at 90 degrees. If that, if I unplug that or that breaks or anything, the temperature in here is going to drop to the ambient temperature and uh, uh, something called thermal expansion. When that, uh, all that liquid in there cools down, it's going to shrink in size and it's going to pull gas out of my inner tubes backwards through my filters. And uh, so the water in this, this is my water bubbler, the water in there is going to get sucked up through that PVC and back into the barrel. Um, so that's uh, that's one consideration. If if you were to have a big temperature fluctuation like that, you'd probably have to um, refill your bubbler. I had uh, I had one more thought that I was going to drop in here. I can't think of what it was. Oh, uh, the placement of the filter. In previous videos, I have put my filters between my uh, between my inner tubes and my compressor while I'm compressing, which would be, this is my compressor here, it'll hook onto here. And in previous videos, I would have put my filters down here. I think, and I, I'm not done testing this, but I think the filters are gonna be a lot more effective if you actually hook them directly to the outlet of your, uh, of your digester because it's going to spend more time it's going to have a higher, more exposure to your filters. So I think it'll, it'll allow your filters to be more effective. Um, so yeah, recommend putting your filters between your digester and whatever gas storage containers you've got. Uh, one more thought, and that is upgrading your water. Uh, I've heard rumors that the water will work a lot better if you mix baking soda, lye, or charcoal into it. Uh, so I've been experimenting with that. I've put a little bit of lye in mine. Um, and this is the lye that I used. I got that off of Amazon. I'll dr drop a link for that too. And that, I guess, reacts better with the CO2 in the biogas to give you more pure, um, more pure methane at the end. So after I put that uh, uh, lye in there, I started getting this black, uh, black, dusty stuff in the bottom. So it's definitely doing something. <laughs> okay, uh, let me know if uh, if you got any questions, and uh, enjoy.